to start with, by way of introduction, I'm going to spend five, six, seven minutes to tell you about my own presidential theme, which is closely aligned with tonight's subject. My presidential theme is um, creating better places. Every time I say this, people say to me, Andreas, why creating better places? You're the president of the Institution of Highways and Transportation. We would have expected you to be highlighting better roundabouts, better traffic lights, better motorways. Why creating better places? I will tell you why. Uh, because of three key influences that have occurred in my professional life. The first one is this gentleman here, Sir Colin Buchanan, who a lot of you will know published the no uh, seminal work Traffic in Towns in the early 60s, which set the agenda for transport planning, not only in the UK, but across the world as well. I had the great privilege of working for his consultancy um, for about 22 years. Um, very, very happy years. And during that time, I learned some very fundamental principles, key lessons that have stayed with me throughout my professional career. The first one is this, the value of land. When this um, quote was first put to me, I was astounded, I was startled. Up until that point, I thought that as a highway engineer, my job was to design highways. Suddenly, somebody was telling me that no, there is something fundamentally more important than that, and that is the value of land. So I said to myself, Andreas, whatever you do in your professional life, whatever you design, keep that principle in mind. What, how we affect the land is so, so important. Land is precious and it comes into our work, whether we're highway engineers, planners, architects, or whatever else. The other thing that I learned working with Colin Buchanan and partners is this thing called compartmentalization. I suddenly realized that we are very good in this country at producing experts. So we produce really good highway engineers, we produce really good planners, etc. But we forget to tell those professionals, those experts, that when they start working, they should occasionally peep over the little hole that they are working in and to see how other people are approaching the same things. So I, I realized that in order to create better places, in order to do a good job, I really needed to bring in other professions to talk to them and to get some slightly different ideas. And this is really, this quote here is very damning. The world is full of experts who are paid to ignore criteria beyond their own professions. It's very important to allow other uh, influences to dissipate and to come into our work. That was another lesson I learned. And Within Colin Buchanan and Partners, we had all these different disciplines, architects, engineers, town planners, and suddenly I started to realize that me, as a, a young highway engineer, I was learning every day. I was learning from all these other people. And um, I hope I was becoming a better professional as a result. And the final thing that I learned is that as a highway engineer, we always look after two key criteria, traffic capacity and highway safety. Well, the lesson I learned at Colin Buchanan is that there are other criteria that we should bring into our work before we design anything, before we finalize anything. We should also think about social cohesion, economic regeneration, health and well-being. In many cases, these criteria are even more important than, than the two other criteria we spend all our days working to. Then, the second influence to my professional uh, career is the Academy of Urbanism, which is why I'm so delighted that we have academicians with us today. I joined the Academy of Urbanism when it was first created about 12 years ago, and it was one of the best things I could have done. Suddenly, I was uh, 
talking, discussing, meeting people from all these other professions who taught me many things. It was a really good school for me. The, the biggest lesson was when I went on many different trips to Europe with the Academy to see how the Europeans created places. And I learned, I, I remember when we went to Freiburg, this is 12 years ago now, and I saw grass on the roofs for the first time. I said to myself, what else from these crazy Germans? But, you know, they were showing us the way into sustainable construction. Um, now it's becoming a bit more the norm, but at the time it was a big surprise to me. In Copenhagen, I saw pictures like this one. I, I was doing a presentation to Cyprus a few years ago on sustainable transport, and I tried to encourage Cyprus to use the bicycles. And a member from the audience stood up to say, how can you expect us to use the bicycle um, in, in, this, uh, in this heat? And I, I showed them this slide and I said, look, the Scandinavians are doing it in the snow. We can do it in the sunshine. Um, this picture here from Malmo, it, I find it inspiring. I look at this picture and I say to myself, these people have created a good place. And look at the people that sit, talk, Dance, those people are confident. Those people are really happy and confident about their lives. What has created that? The place that surrounds them. So the place creates better places, better people, and those people will then go on and create something uh, significant. So the place affects what we do with our lives. In Eindhoven, I learned about the importance of creating a good place in order to bring about economic regeneration. Eindhoven used to be known as the home of Philips, and after the collapse of Philips in the late 80s, the Dutch decided we are not going to accept this, we're going to go, go into new technologies, attract new brains, and how are we gonna do this? By turning our town into a better place that will welcome the best brains in the world. So economic regeneration also comes from creating better places. And then the third influence is this book here. If there is, if, if there, uh, if there is a book that has changed people's lives, I, this one hasn't quite changed my life, but it has been very, very important in affecting the way that I approach my own work. And I need to say nothing more about the book other than this particular quote which really reinforces the message I was telling you about Eindhoven. Businesses are attracted to a place where people want to live. What does that mean? We used to think that prosperity is the result of a strong economy. Wrong. Prosperity is the result of a good place. You need to have a good place first to attract the good brains that will lead to creativity, that will lead to good economies and prosperity. So we've turned it upside down. What do we need to, in order to achieve our goal? It's so easy. All these things I've been telling you about, they're so obvious and so easy. But we don't do them. We need courage. We need a leap of faith. We need to break the norm. It's what I was talking about, the compartmentalization. We need to break out of the silos. And I'm so tired of hearing this from many colleagues that I speak to. How can I make a difference, they say. I'm just a highway engineer. You are not just a highway engineer. We are not just highway engineers. We are creators of the world that we live in. We are a lot more than just a highway engineer. But unfortunately, we have this mental blockage. We are just highway engineers. And I represent this with a brick wall. What do we need to do in our everyday life we need to break that wall. We need to break that mental blockage. We are a lot more than just higher engineers. We do something far more fundamentally significant than that. I'm going to finish by reminding you that uh, CIHT is active in many parts, in many facets of uh, transport planning and engineering. Here is a list of some of our initiatives and publications that we have had very, in, in, the last, in the last few years, we are always challenging our members and trying to push us into a different place.